Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sam Kovac, and today we are going to redo this setup here. Uh, this is my go-to stand. This is the one I use mostly. I have a bunch more. I got stands. I got lone wolf stands all over up here. I got a, um, I got there. I got another one there. I got one more in a box. I got two more sets of sticks in boxes over there. So I got a lot of these stands. I love these stands, but what I want to do is, this being my main stand, this is the one that I use all the time, my go-to setup, and uh, we're going to replace some parts on here. We're going to make sure everything's good. Now, last year, I went ahead and put brand new cables and all new hardware um, on this stand. This year, we're going to replace the straps uh, on my sticks and my stands. We're going to put new yak grips on it, and then we're going to make sure all the points are quiet, where contact points are. We're going to check the foam out, all that kind of stuff. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do here first thing we have to do is before i even start is i want to test each one of these straps and make sure they're good make sure the buckles aren't going to slide or anything like that so we're going to take this stand we're going to bring it outside and i'm going to put it on a tree i'm actually gonna i'm gonna do each one of those straps even though some of them are four sticks we're going to do it all right on the actual stand and uh we're going to replace this strap with each one of these and make sure they hold and that doesn't pull away from the tree and that everything's good too. So we're going to go out there and do that right now just to be sure and that way we know those straps are all good. All right, now as I test these straps, you can see that I have that on a downward angle from there. You know, that's about the straight up and down of that tree, but I have it on a downward angle on that leaning away side. I do that on purpose because I just want to step on this and I want to make sure that this cam buckle that's on here right here does not slip i want to make sure that's not going to slip at all on there so i get on that stand i look at it i watch it i'm watching that bat wing bracket back there and making sure i'm bouncing on it pretty hard making sure that strap is not moving and that buckle's not sliding and i'm going to do that with each one of these and then that way i make sure that they're going to hold and prevent it so that uh we don't have a situation where i'm you know climbing up that tree and i get up to, you know i go to put on a third stick and i put that stick on and i go to step on it and it pulls away from the tree i don't want that to happen so by testing these like this ahead of time i make sure they're going to lock good and they're going to work perfect if one did not work i would send it back and tell them i need a replacement very rarely but in 20 years of using lone wolf stands i've had maybe uh one it didn't work when i first got it and maybe two that stopped working after a couple of years they just got loose and remember for me a couple of years is probably for most people about five or ten years worth of use uh because i i hang you know i hang 200 stands a year so it's a whole different ball game but anyway so i'm going to finish that with each one of those and make sure it's perfect okay so now we know that those straps all work i tested each one of them they worked fantastic i didn't expect any less now before i do anything else with the stand i want to double check everything on there again i put new cables and hardware on there last year so i know those are good i just want to make sure that bolts are tight everything's working right here just a quick check over make sure everything's good make sure those washers on there have no cracks or anything in them so they're all good too versa buttons are good nothing cracked on there that's set that's still in good condition where that's going to drop in and rust against so i'm fine and i want to make sure that these loops are still i glue mine shut so that seat doesn't come off and they're still connected while they're on so we're good there and then make sure that bat wing bracket not loose everything's good there and check each of these bushings in here and make sure everything is good so once you check that stand out i know that that stuff is good then i want to flip this so that i can check out the bottom here of this now these are my rest points on here these are where when i close that stand that seat is going to come into contact with these points that are on here right here it's where it all comes together in contacts so i have Wrap, I've done videos on how I quiet this, but I'm looking at this going, okay, um, we need to fix that real fast. So I'm going to put a little bit more tape on here just so that you can see it's starting to pop off and it starts to wear out. So I'm going to put a couple more pieces of tape on there. Uh, notice this has got a zip tie on this buckle. This zip tie is broke off and gone. These just swing open and then they're adjustable. Well, I don't want them swinging open on me at the wrong time. So I put a small zip tie across there. So I'm going to... Uh, grab a small zip tie and put that right on there and have that right across so that that is going to keep that from opening up on me. These are nothing fancy. These uh, these Allen 
uh, backpack straps, shoulder straps, but they work good. And remember, I don't actually use my tree stand. I don't carry it in the woods by these. This whole set gets strapped on my sticks and stands. So the only time I use these is going up and down the tree. So, I mean, they, they're pretty beat and they've been through a lot, but they still work great. So I just keep right on using them. Um, but so now we want that on there. And once that's on and set, we are going to cut that off and just leave that on there just as a spare part right there to keep that good. These are fine here. This, oh, there it is. There's the piece that was on there. The zip tie that was on there. Those I like loose. This here's got a zip tie on a knot down here just to hold it. I'm gonna redo that zip tie on that once that's pretty loose. Um, and then we're gonna fold that in. Make sure that's still tied on there good. We're gonna put a zip tie on there. So basically just going through the stand and making sure everything on here is exactly like I want it so that I don't have any issues or any, I don't have to stop during the season to do any of this. I don't have to mess with it. Even the straps that I'm, I'm taking off of here, these straps are not in very bad of shape. They are still pretty good straps. These will not go to waste. I will throw these in my, I will have some in my truck. I will have one in my spare parts bag. I will have them available. So if I need one, we got them available. So they're not garbage yet, um, but there's no reason for me to, you know, my, I, I like the safety factor of making sure this stuff is all fine-tuned. And for the 50 bucks every two years, every two or three years that I replace straps and do this stuff, it's worth it. For the every other year that, that I put a new, new cables every two years, two or three years, I put new cables and hardware. For the 50 bucks for that, it's, it's well worth it. So for me, it's no big deal. I don't mind doing it. I'm going to go ahead. I'll come back to taping these up here. So we'll do that in a minute. Um, and then we'll finish the stand. Now on the sticks... Same kind of thing. Now, I already know these steps are these steps. This is how I wrap them, by the way. Loose, wrap it around. So when I come down a tree and I get down, I take this strap and I roll it right around the bottom, flip it right up to the Versa button, hook it on there, and yank it, and it's done. Sweet, simple, and easy. So it works fantastic. But this strap here is being replaced. These I will keep. Like I said, I'm not getting rid of these straps. Um, they're just becoming already used but available extra and emergency straps. Now on here, I want to check the looseness of these steps, okay? Every year, you kind of got to tighten up a bolt here and there. They're lock washered in or lock nutted in, but sometimes they get a little bit too loose. You want to tighten them up. That's good. That one's perfect tension. This one could use a little bit more, so I will tighten that up. Also, I like to check this notches in here. What's nice about these is they're reversible, but you check that notch. If you were ever getting to a point where that was wearing... Um, and it wasn't catching that lip exactly like we wanted to on there or was wearing you would unbolt this and flip this step around put it on and then you're working this top edge of that so you get a lot of life out of these steps um, but I always like to take a look at those and see how they're resting on there and how that point is right there where they're coming in contact make sure that they're you know it's not wore down too low or there's a chance of it slipping around there so and there's not they really never would but if they get too mangled up like i said you can flip it over um but so i checked that on each of the sticks this one we know has to be tightened up a touch i will need a uh um, i'm going to need and i don't remember what size i want to say i think it's 7 16 let's check here and see um, as you get older, you realize that it gets harder and harder to read sockets. Let me see here. What are we at? Yep. So it's seven sixteenths, right? Is that what that is? Yep. Seven sixteenths. So I'm taking a seven sixteenths socket, taking a seven sixteenths wrench, which would be right here. And this is the one that we got to tighten up a touch. All I'm doing is just holding onto that and just giving that just a smidge of a turn, just to snug that up a little bit more. Check that tension. There, now that's what I want. That stick is ready for a strap. So that one is done, waiting for straps to be put on. And I'm gonna go through each one of these and do that same thing and just make sure that everything on these sticks is 100% perfect. Again, so I don't have to mess with it at all during the season. Same here, that's tight. That one's good and tight up there. That one's good and tight there. This is my main stick, so it's got the aider on it. And that one's good, so I don't have to mess with those. All of my pinch points on there look fine. No excessive wear, no anything to worry about, so those are good. My aider is holding rock solid and perfect. That's going to be fantastic. So zip ties are on there good. I got a wire wrap on there that holds it on. That not solid. Nothing's moving on that. I got no worries there. That stick is done. And then I do the same thing for the other one. 
I'm going to tape these up now on this stick or on the stand, these bottom parts here. I'm going to tape those real fast. Then we'll come back and we're going to start building our, uh, our uh, yak grips and our new straps and get those ready. So we'll be right back. Okay, I went ahead and rewrapped those. So those are all wrapped up on there. I got these done too. And I did a couple modifications to this because uh, I don't want these flapping around anymore. I, get I pull them through on windy days. Um, two years ago, I got busted in Missouri by having these straps flapping on a windy day under here. I think it was these straps because um, I always tuck my climbing stick straps as I go up on windy days. But see how I added this other one? So this long strap now that would have been all this extra length that would have been flopping around in the wind now stays tight on there and will not flap. So I did that. I kind of cut those off again. So now if I'm on a windy day, I can, while I'm in my stand, grab these right here and I can just take this strap and pull them right up like this. That's all I do with them. I just stick them right in the corners like that where I'm not stepping. And now that wind's not going to move them. So, but now I, before I would have this still hanging and I'd have to fit, fit it in there and they would fall out. So now it's just a simple right there. Just put another zip tie on it so I can still adjust them. But now that will keep that from flopping around in the wind. I did retape these up so they're good. Made sure all that stuff is set. Now, one thing I wanted to show you, this stuff here, I've shown this on my uh, Instagram and social media, amazing stuff right here. This stuff right here, this 30 foot of rubber wire for five bucks, incredible. So I wanted to see, I already have uh, rubber tubing is what I have under these rubber nubs right here. Okay, this is a, a hunk of rubber tubing, like wash machine cord. Uh, I got a piece right here, I'll show you something kind of like, uh, you know, like this tubing, like this, did I take and I sliced it and I put it over that and I taped around it so that it's dead quiet when things hit and I don't have to have tons of tape on there. Well, this stuff I bet you could use the same way. Now, I've already got this stand set up. All my stands are this way except for the new one in the box. But um, if you were to run this and you didn't want to go that route, I'll bet this wire stuff right here would work perfect too. You could set that right on there and just wrap it around, give it a quick couple wraps like this, put that right on there. Like that, and maybe even put a piece of tape over it, but that would be quiet enough now as that stand were to open and close as it hit that, that would silence it. So, you know, that rubber wire stuff, amazing stuff. So that would give you a, another option to make those quiet points with something as simple as this stuff right here. Now, so stand is basically done. Next thing I do is I always go through and I want to make sure that these are in good shape and no rips in a duct tape. These are my in-between pieces here. They're swim noodles. Now, the reason I have duct tape on them is because this stuff is, you know, it's, it's strong, but you kick, if you catch those on sticks and stuff, you can rip chunks out of them. The duct tape adds a layer of durability to these. It is unbelievable. And it adds a little bit of waterproofness. So when these are laying at the bottom of the tree, if it rains on them, <clears throat> they're not soaking up moisture very well. So, but... I make sure that that tape is all in good shape on there. Uh, and if there's a piece that's got a rip in there, then I just put a piece of tape over it. So I make sure those are set and good and ready to roll. Now, we want to make the yak grips, okay? So we get yak grips, which are buckle covers that I'm using here, okay? These are three seasons on these yak grips, okay, that are on here. And they're in, still in very good shape. I'm, I'm almost tempted to just use them again, but... Um, like I said, I want these straps preset and ready to go as spare. So I'm going to leave them that way. And yak grips are not expensive. But when I cut this in half, you can see on here that this threading goes starts at one end and goes all the way to the other. When I cut this in half to make a half piece like this, like you're seeing here, that's going to cut through that threading. So I've got my sewing kit. I'm going to have to stitch like I did there and stitch up the end of this in order to keep that from splitting apart. So that's what we're going to do. So I already marked these. They're six inches long. I put a little mark right there with a Sharpie marker so I know that that's where I need to cut that at. Somewhere I got a square here. So we're going to take that, put that on here. And basically we are going to line that up so that I can cut right across there just like that. And I'm just going to grab a razor blade. And when I cut this, I'm going to cut right through that stitching and everything that's on there. So this is, and I, again, I have videos on this stuff, but so right here's where I want. And I'm going to cut it right on through, all the way through it that way, right through the stitching. Now I have two yak grips that I can use for buckle covers. But if I start pulling on these ends, those stitchings are going to come out. So then what I'm going to do next, I'm going to go ahead and, that's one set. I'm going to cut this one here too real fast. So I got it cut. Did I mark this one? I thought I did. Yes, right there. So we are going to cut this one. 
can cut right through here. So that's cut. So now we got four yak grip pieces here. Stick that razor blade over there. Done with this. And now we are going to sew those. So I'm going to just take my leather making kit. Anything works. Whatever you want to use is fine. Um, I am going to use some of this, which is serving material. This is just stuff I have, 26 or 0.26 uh, fast light braided serving material. But, you know, I use it for making bow strings. Also works fantastic for this stuff. And I'm going to grab my needles out of here and just take one needle. And then I'm going to just put a stitch. You can do this with regular house needles. You know, you don't need anything fancy here. Um, but I'm going to use a needle and thread, and I'm going to stitch right around those corners. Just wrap, 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 put 10, 12 stitches right here just so that that cannot come apart because I did cut through that stitching. Now some guys can just hit this with a lighter, take a lighter like this and then just hit that and they say that it'll seal it up good enough so that it won't come apart. I'm just too anal and I stitched those so I'll put a few stitches in. We'll be right back. Okay, we got those yak grips sewn and you can tell that I didn't even sew any of them the same. Okay, if there's no rocket science to this. You could use dental floss if you wanted to. It doesn't have to be crazy or creative. All it has to do is keep that from opening up on the corner since that stitching's gone. So nothing fancy. I did, Like I said, I didn't even do them the same way each way, but um, they work. Okay, that gets, it gets the job done. And then what you end up with is it's going to go over your buckle, which I'll show you. But the key advantage to this is right here, if you have a loose one anywhere this touches... Hear that? Anywhere that hits. Anywhere on a stick. Okay, you get that metal sound. With this, nothing. Quiet. No chance of it making any noise. That's the key to the yak grip. So, and I leave my straps on my sticks and my stand with the loose end connected to this. So my loose end is what sits here. Stays on there all the time. So what that does is that means that as I'm throwing this around the tree, I swing this, I have the weight of that buckle to bring it around and be able to catch it. So I like it this way. But if this bangs into anything, I'm getting no noise, nothing, dead quiet, which is what we're after there. So to put these on, so we take a new strap right here. Um, and some people say too, well, it's so hard to move that with the yak grip. When you first put these on, they're tight. See, inside this yak grip, there's neoprene in there. Okay, inside of there, that's what makes them so great. They stick to the buckle and they don't move. But to hit it, you press the button and it works. Okay, but it is a little stiffer than not having the yak grip on there. But still very easy to tighten and loosen. Just a matter of uh, letting that break in for a day or two. So the first day or so while that's on there, they might seem a little bit stiff. But um, they do loosen up pretty quick. Like this one here, after these years, like I said, nothing to it. There's no no issue with that being there at all. Works just fine. Um, all right, so that over there. So to put one of these on, we take a buckle right here like that. And I want to take this and I just feed this right through. I put both straps. The whole set right through there. So this is going to go right onto there. So put it on there, get it on, and then you got to kind of wiggle it around the sides. Just work it on. It's not too bad. Pull that. And just work it this way. Oh, I see a thread that I want to seal on there. Just because. There we go. But you want to just pull them on, work it on. Now when you get to this part right here, see how it kind of dives in there? If you don't pull that over in one shot like that, you'll need a screwdriver to pop that up over there, you know, to get it there to make it work. But like I said, this is not, again, not, not hard, not complicated to do. Just work that right over. It takes a second because, again, you want them tight. If these fit too loose, then, um, then they wouldn't stay on there like you want them to. So pull, pull it on like that. And you want to just center it so that all of the metal of the buckle is hidden in there and confined under there. And it just takes a second because you're working rubber neoprene in there. So slide it, slide it, slide it. Have this side, slide that. Almost there. So I figure it takes you about a minute, minute and a half per buckle to kind of get them in there. Okay. Almost all the way in. There we go. So then, once it's in and you have that buckle completely covered, you're set. So then you have your yak grips done on there. 
Um, I'll go ahead and do the other two, but basically that's it. Then I'm just going to reassemble my setup. The other thing I do have to do is this is my, my straps that connect my stands and my sticks. So my sticks or stand comes down this way. I've done videos on this. This one goes on the crossbar back here. This one goes on the seat and rest right there. And then my sticks go on here this way like this. They rest right on here like that. And then I use these to hold them on. Well, these, as you can see, look at this tape is, is completely basically off and loose. Um, I modified that by cutting it shorter. You can see that I have a piece of uh, aquarium hose tubing on the ends of that to keep that, again, quiet. Okay? I don't want any metal metal tinking sounds that you would get if I, okay, if I hit that. But I, I want no metal sound from that when I'm hooking these up. So um, so I do tape that all and make sure everything's all perfect. So I'll go through these and just uh, fine tune them. And then my rig will be 100% done and ready for the season. And I should not have to touch anything. I can hang this stand 150 or 200 times this year without issue, without concern, without fail, because everything is done. Nothing worse than being on a morning hunt, getting out there, hanging it, and then you have a strap that starts to, uh, all these are still in pretty good shape, but you, you notice a strap that starts to shred through right there, or something happening, or, or a buckle that starts to get in the tree, and you go, and it starts slowly creeping like this. On there, and then you're you're fighting and wedging sticks in behind the buckle to try and hold it. Been there. I've seen all kinds of this stuff happen, and I learned that you maintain your stuff and you take care of it, and you're set. And I'm doing it right now. It's the last week of August. That way, this stuff is done. I don't have to think about this now. This is one thing completely out of the way. And all the states I hunt, all the places I go, and everything I do, I know that this rig is 100% perfect and set. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye.